my friends, it's been quite a while since our last conversation and due to the fact that it's still quarantine and I have some free time, I decided to talk with you a little bit more about some stuff which is relevant and important for me. And um, actually, um, I've noticed that there have been several uh, comments on my previous videos about studying as an international relations student and all this fear. And today I wanted to share with you my experience. And first of all, I'd like to point out that I'm studying right now uh, in a country, uh, in a Western European country. So basically the whole system and the whole structure of my studies is not very maybe relevant and uh, not very well spread in the US and Canada, but still I want to share my experience because I feel like the struggle which all international relations students have is the same for every country. So today I want to share with you several things which all the students should know before enrolling into any kind of international relations school. And I really hope that people who are applying right now and are waiting for the end of this enrolling campaign will uh, find it useful. So let's get started. The first thing which I really uh, had no idea about before I entered my university is that we would have so many history classes. And if you are going to be an international relations student, you really should be ready to study lots of history because basically the whole studies is based on history. Uh, history of international relations, history of conflicts, history of your country, history of several other countries if you have a specialization in them. Actually, uh, I don't think that it's appropriate to somehow comment on this fact because it really depends on the person and uh, I am a person person who does not like studying uh, history too much. Yeah, I know that there is a cliche which says if you do not know uh, your history, you have no future. But I don't know, it's just too much. So be prepared, be ready, and you need to get into every conflict, into every detail in order to understand the proper uh, flow of all these events in the past. So yeah, that's the thing which I really wished um, I had found out before entering the university. Another thing which might be very basic but still important is that you have to know languages. And I don't know about uh, different states because I feel like uh, it also really depends on the country where you are studying, but still is something which is really necessary because uh, you will have to work with people who are unlikely to speak your language only if you are not an American or a Canadian citizen. So basically you will have to communicate with them and the only way for you to succeed is to know several languages. I will not name you the precise number because I feel like the more you know the better um, but still uh, as for me um I'm currently studying Italian and I'm currently studying Korean. And one more thing I've forgotten, uh, when I was at school, I studied French for six years and uh, now I remember actually nothing, but I still can understand uh, the speech of French people and I can read and uh, comprehend everything in the articles, for example, in uh, any kind of uh, French newspaper and whatever. So it really helps me with my studies because I have uh, much more uh, sources of information to look through if I'm writing um, my uh, bachelor thesis or any kind of essay. But still, yeah, I need to like revive this whole French learning process and uh, be finally able to speak and communicate because that's something I really lack. And uh, actually my plan for this year is to finish my French, uh, to definitely study German because I'm into German and I love this language, I love the German culture and all of this, and uh, maybe try to start any other new language such as Arab. I'm telling you this because it's really important to find some kind of internal strength to <laughs> make yourself study languages. Even though every country is different, all the ministries of foreign affairs have something in common and it basically working with languages, working with information in foreign languages. So yeah, that's it. Another one, another problem or another specific thing which um, I've learned and which um, I was surprised about is the number of uh, essays and other written works. And the problem with these essays is mainly about the uh, fact that the information uh, in mass media is uh, 
always distorted so basically when you are writing something you really need to double check everything and when you are handing it in you just need to cross your fingers and think and hope that the professor will uh, find your position sufficient and uh, well argumented we all are used to just presenting information to describing some facts but you will have to conclude and uh, make proper analysis after presenting this uh, arguments and uh, add something of your own to any kind of your work, uh, which I realized only uh, doing my last year, like this one, and now I'm finishing my uh, bachelor thesis, and um, I'm finally understanding why my previous courseworks uh, were graded really, um, I wouldn't say with low marks, but still it was a B, it was 82 or 85, and once I had to uh, rewrite it because uh, it contained no analysis. It was just pure description of the facts which uh, were written in some history books. Another thing which might seem trite uh, is uh, something which I also realized uh, only during my third year, I would say, is that uh, this kind of profession uh, demands from you being uh, well-rounded and well-equipped in any kind of sphere. You will have to figure out how to solve economic problems, how to solve um, some judicial cases concerning, for example, International Court of Justice. You will have to learn about international law a lot. And personally, I think that that thing is very useful because no international relations uh, can be established without international law being concerned. So, yeah, uh, and uh, you can find yourself in a position when you feel like you know so many things about everything, but you actually know nothing in particular. Your profession is kind of a mixture of all these things, and uh, it might confuse you, and uh, it might uh, arouse different mixed feelings, as it was for me. Actually, last year I realized that I don't know how to deal with my future uh, job application because uh, the only thing which I can write down there is that I know all the subjects, but like in 70% volume. So I cannot go into audit and consulting because I'm not an economist and I cannot go to uh, the majority of law firms because I'm not a lawyer. And the only thing for me is to figure out how to uh, apply to international companies. And that is the last point which I want to make is your future job opportunities. I know that maybe uh, in the United States or in uh, in some developed, well-developed countries, it's much easier for students to uh, get accepted, to uh, receive any prestigious offer. But still, when we talk in general, it's really difficult to understand who you are and what your profession is. Basically, you have no idea what vacancy to apply to. Because um, you will hear a lot during these years that this profession will open any door. You will have so many opportunities because you have so much knowledge in different spheres. You can be an economist, you can be a lawyer, you can be uh, an ambassador, you can be um, a representative of uh, an, I don't know, non-governmental company somewhere abroad. And all this stuff. You will hear this, but it's just words and you will never get the real answer what to do with your life after you graduate. I know one thing which might be also useful for you uh, is that you will have to go to uh, do your master's because without master's you are not considered a proper professional. Any company you would like to apply to will ask you whether you have a master's or not and if you don't have it uh, they will kindly ask you to finish your studies and then go and apply. That's the problem because I have to spend two more years to be a proper professional even though I'm very tired of studying, even though I have quite quite a sufficient level of knowledge in these spheres and I will have to like uh, suffer for two more years and uh, revise all the information which I used to study during these four years. Even when you are finishing your master's, be ready to uh, face this problem of not knowing where to apply to and how to apply to. Because the only understandable way for people who finished uh, studying international relations is working for Ministry of Foreign Affairs, is being an ambassador, is being a diplomat. But um, 
There is also uh, a difficulty with this thing because the number of people who uh, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs needs is very limited and you are unlikely to get accepted like this at the moment because uh, you will have to wait maybe half a year, maybe a year and when you start your work you will not be sent to uh, any foreign country at first. You will have to work uh, in the central apparatus, as they call it, in, in the central uh, system, in the system in your country, and you will have to do all this unpleasant work of uh, bringing the papers, sorting them out, of uh, collecting information, checking the mass media, even being a secretary and just bringing coffee. And I'm not complaining because I know that uh, we all have to start from the bottom to get to the top. But it's not the bottom I want to start when I've been studying for six years and uh, I've been really digging into this whole difficult system and especially when I get my uh, bachelor with honors. It's not something I want to do, uh, but you will have to, unfortunately. And um, uh, if you uh, succeed and uh, if you are selected to be this uh, lucky one to go abroad and to work there, first of all, you will have no personal life. Your whole life will stick to one thing, working. Because you will have to wake up at 4 a.m. when people from the ministry will call you. Uh, you will have to uh, work like uh, from, I don't know, from 9 to 9 at least. As for a very personal side of your life, it will be very difficult to find a partner who will be ready to uh, travel with you every two or three years to change their places of living, to change their schedule, their routine and just say, okay, uh, it's been two years, uh, we've been in Albania, let's go to, I don't know, to Wakanda. Well, going to Wakanda might be fun, at least. I mean, you can be sent anywhere. And if your partner is ambitious, and they probably are, because after all this suffering and uh, studying for six years, your mindset changes a lot and you try to find people who are um, going to break these uh, brick walls and fight with you, they are unlikely to follow you because they just want to build their own life and to fulfill their own ambitions and that's the problem and that's the problem of your relations and personal life you will not have it and actually i'm exaggerating right uh, i know many families of diplomats who are fine who are happy but anyways one of these people in a couple had to uh, leave all their goals desires dreams behind and follow the path of another person which is difficult and not all the people are ready to sacrifice their own life in order to fulfill this blue dream of yours to become a diplomat to become an ambassador to uh, a prestigious uh, well-developed state or to become a representative in the united nations the number of these people uh, is closer to zero <laughs> than to uh, at least 50%. Okay, let's assume that you are this kind of person who is ready to sacrifice your life and uh, pursue this career, but one thing you will really regret sacrificing is your freedom, because you will lose it. And uh, by losing freedom, I mean that you will have no control over your appearance. Uh, the ministry and uh, everyone will tell you what you should look like. Especially it's relevant for women, because we still live uh, in a very extremely sexist society uh, with the male dominance, unfortunately. And uh, you will have to have a, a specific haircut. Uh, you will have to wear very natural makeup, uh, no uh, nails done, and um, no piercing, no tattoos, nothing. And that is the thing which has been very difficult for me, because I cannot get used to the idea, to the thought that I will have to give up on my personality to be an ordinary uh, worker for the Ministry of Foreign Affairs and to maybe one day get a prestigious position somewhere on the top, while I can still uh, just give up on this idea and uh, establish my business and um, have much more opportunities, still have money and have freedom. 
if you asked me whether I regretted uh, becoming an international relations student or not, I would definitely say that I have no regrets, actually. I really enjoyed this profession and studying the subjects. I really love this. But the number of problems around your job outweighs any kind of uh, merits which this profession has. And uh, glamorizing the work of ambassadors and just their image is something which comes from uh, mass culture and uh, the representation of these people in films, in uh, any kind of TV shows. And uh, it's something which um, attracts people. And uh, I know several uh, friends who decided to become a diplomat just basing on their idea of a diplomatic life, which was presented in several TV shows and films. It's not that glamorous. It has lots of problems. It has lots of stress. And you need to realize it before entering the university, before choosing this profession, because um, you have to be ready. And I really don't want you to uh, be disappointed after a while and drop out and uh, try to find any other new profession you would like instead of uh, international relations. Consider this video as a piece of advice from your elder sister who is finishing her bachelor degree uh, in international relations, who has suffered a lot during these four years, but still who is very grateful to all the opportunities this profession uh, has given to her. So I hope that this video was kind of useful for people who are applying right now and uh, for those who are maybe finishing their first, second, third or even fourth year. Uh, if you have the same struggle studying as an international relations student, please leave the comments down below. I really need to feel this connection to you because I feel like I'm alone on this one. I feel like I'm, I'm the only one struggling while all my friends are faking that they are like very happy that they are finishing uh, this kind of of a profession they want to pursue this career it used to be like this for me but not anymore so please share your stories in the comments down below some of you have asked me about my instagram whether i have it or not and i didn't have it uh, until the last week and i will leave a, a link below um, i will be happy to see you there we can communicate and just share our struggles on this high note, I would like to thank you for watching this video, for sticking up with me for so many minutes. Feel free to give this video a big thumbs up somewhere over there and uh, you can subscribe to my channel somewhere over there if you are new here and basically <laughs> you're new here, I think, because I have 100 subscribers, but okay. So yeah, have a good day, take care of yourself and I hope that I will see you very, very soon. Bye! That was a difficult topic to discuss, actually. That's something triggering. That is something close to a panic attack. <laughs> oh.